Now, the one thing I will note, uh, this is just a, something I know from doing this a lot. Uh, a lot of movies start out with black at the beginning and then fade in. So starting at the very beginning of the movie, not always the best. They could be black, you know, halfway through. They could be black at the beginning. But a lot of movies fade in. If they gave us the thumbnails, we could make a system here that would always display it. We're not that lucky today. but So a way around these, frame, these movies that start with black frames is just to put the cue point up a little bit. Just... 14% of the way through the movie. And it's just a sort of a uh, indication of where we so are. So the thumbnail would be that frame. That frame. Uh, instead of percentage, if you wanted to use frames, I could say select frames and select the uh, 100th frame. Okay. So we're remember, we're in one of the clones right now, so this work isn't going out. We had to go in here to kind of explore, and we know that clones, well, this this work that we're doing won't be saved. So let's, we got to go back and do it in the, in the real master. So We'll go into container one. So up here, move project one, movie lib, and container one. And I'm going to uh, I'm going to open the parameters for movie yeah. file in. And I'm gonna put the cue point just forward a bit, like that. Okay, and we can pulse it to make sure it works. Okay, it works. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go back up to the, the layer where my replicator is. And I'm going to close the parameters because I need more more space here. And I'm going to zoom into this rep this script that we have because I, I want to I want you guys to be able to see it. And we have to add a little bit of work here. So bear with me. This isn't too bad. But uh, what we need to do is for for every uh, thing that we copy, we need to for everything that we copy, which is called C, because uh, we're doing for every C in the new operators that we make. Okay, we need to go to the operator that's called movie file in one. It's called the movie file in one. So it's going to be dot slash movie file in one. And I'm sorry, I, I forgot the quotes, so we need quotes around that. And then close the round bracket. There's no square brackets. Hopefully, you can find backspace. Or backslash, forward slash. Dot uh, par. I want to go to the parameter, and let me look at the parameter here. See the Q parameter? If I open it up with the plus sign, I see that there's two parameters. There's the Q parameter and the Q pulse parameter. This button. So we want to click the button, right? So we're going to the movie file in one, dot par, dot Q pulse. <coughs> now, because this is a push button, it's not good enough to set it equal to one. You can't just set a button to one. You want to push the button, or actually, since it's a pulse button, you want to pulse the button. So we have a method, we have a Python method called pulse. So you dot, dot pulse. So double check that you have your quotes around the movie file in part. And hopefully all the spelling is right. Open and close brackets, yeah. yeah okay. This is because it's a Python method, which is like a function, not a member. So functions all have the brackets ready to go to put yeah. arguments in. Yeah. So. so let's see if it works. I'm going to go to my replicator. I'm going to open the parameters, and I'm going to recreate. You see how I still have the black ones? Because they haven't had this pulse. I'm going to recreate all operators. I'm just going to hit it once. Uh, it didn't work. I'm going to move on without debugging that right now. And uh, we'll, do it, uh, we'll do the next part, and this, this, this should fix it anyway. OK? So if we look at what I built over here, as I roll over these thumbnails, they kind of play forward. So let's just deal with it like that. And we'll have to run our mouse over them to make them start playing a little bit and load a frame. But it will work. And uh, I'll get back to you on why that doesn't work. <laughs> let's look at the right-hand side, inside container 1. We have the, our movie file in. And there's this play. And there's this play parameter. So what we want to do is, as we roll over, we want the play parameter to to go, to go to 1, to start playing. So as we roll over this thumbnail, hopefully this can...
can play. So let's open up this and put a, another little script. This one will work. <laughs> so it's op again, and we just did this. We want to open the curve, uh, parentheses, and then play parameter. Yeah, you can click it to open it. Open the parentheses and double quote. And we want to look at the thumbnail. And then we uh, close the double quotes and close the parentheses. And we want to get the rollover panel value. There's all these panel values that are in, in gadgets, and um, they can be accessed through panel. For example, if, if you don't have, don't do this part. I'm just going to show you all the panel things that are available to you. If I were to put down a panel chop, and I put the thumbnail on it, and I make this really big, you can see all these panel values available to you, right? And when I click on it and all this stuff, you can see there's one called rollover. And as soon as my mouse is over it, it goes to one. So we'll use that interaction to make this play forward a little bit. As whenever the mouse is over the movie, it'll it'll play forward in our thumbnail. All right. Oh, it 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 just knows. See, as my cursor is going over it, that's the rollover. It's like in a web page when you roll over a button and it changes changes its color. It's the same same uh, terminology. Uh, all all of these, all these panel components, which are uh, for making UIs, have all these these variables in it. They're just all part of the brains of the of the panel. Yeah. So uh, to access that, because it's a panel, it's dot panel dot rollover. Not too hard, but just stuff you need to learn and remember. And again, if I really wanted to learn about all these things, if I went to the thumbnails help here, just uh, with the Python help, all of these things can be found in here. Down here, where is it? Panel variables. Yeah. Container comp. Wait a second. Panel comp class. There we go. Uh, panel values is a there on the right. Button. Yes, panel values. All these. So, they're all there. Okay. There's a lot of help. <laughs> okay, so I will select that for you so you can read it still. There we go. Op thumbnail dot panel dot rollover, and let's see if it works. If I bring the mouse over it, it does. It starts playing forward. You can see that that little switch turns off and on now. The thumbnail, the viewer has to be active because when it's just like a node, the viewer is not active. So you make the viewer active, and now you can. Yeah, sorry, I didn't say that. That's. So if you've made it this far, let's uh, save the work by Control S. And let's open the movie li library uh, panel, the viewer, uh, using this square, open viewer. And let's see if we can see all our movies. OK. It's working. As I roll over, they keep playing forward. Uh, it will try to fit itself best in there because we made those panels a strict size. Um, but you could actually dynamically change that a little bit. Uh, you, you could put extra logic in your scripts. The pulse, the pulse doesn't seem to work, so uh, right now I'll, I'll try to figure that out. But basically, when I make a new, when I make them all again new like that, it's not loading them in. Always load first frame option on the Yeah. In the container, container one, go to the movie in top. On the tune page, turn on always load initial frame. Okay, so let's save that again. And I'm going to open the viewer again, and yeah, it's still working. Okay, great.
So we're almost there. There's just one one part left, and that is um, we want to we want to make a, a a viewer here. So when we select the movie, we can see the view in, in something bigger. So this is a uh, it's just not not too hard. We just need another line. So I want to add um, a movie file in here that will start playing the movie we selected whenever we select it. Okay. So let's add a top called movie file in. And I have a lot of movie file ins everywhere right now, so let's rename this to movie selected. And so what we need to do is we need to add Whenever we click on one of these thumbnails, not roll over, but whenever we click, we want to we want to change the file that this is going to be playing. And we want to maybe we want to start the movie over at the beginning too. If we want to click on it every time, we don't want to just start from some random location. So we're going to we're going to do two things: replace the file path and click on the Q Pulse button. So let's go into our, our container on the right here. <clears throat> and basically, when I click on this thumbnail, I want some uh, script to run. This is the last Python I'm going to get you to do. So to run, to run a script based on a panel event, we actually have a bunch of dats that operate on events, or whenever something gets executed. So if I open the uh, upgrade dialog and look into dats, I have a bunch of execute chops. I have a chop execute, a dat execute, regular execute, op execute and panel execute. This is the one I want because we're talking about a thumbnail panel. So panel is mouse mouse or interactions. Or attached, yeah, right. exactly. So we'll get the panel execute down. Put it here. Okay. So select the the panel execute. And we'll look at the parameters. Okay, I I don't want it to I want it to look at my thumbnail. So you can uh, close that and drag the thumbnail into the panel. So it's looking at thumbnail, referencing thumbnail. Sorry, so I select panel execute. Yeah. And, you know, look at the parameters, and there's a panel parameter. So that's the one it's going to listen for events. And then I want to, um, I don't want to use state. I want to use uh, select, which will work on any of the mouse buttons. I could use rollover. I could use select. I could use a lot of things, but I, I know I want select. Now these toggles here, um, I'll just explain them quickly. What they mean is um, if you turn these on or off, when the select goes from off to on, it's going to go down here and run a script in the off to on uh, section of the script here. If I want something to happen while when the button goes, when select goes on to off, if I zoom in, there's also an on to off script. So you can have different scripts on different events. So this is how we build the entire UI of Touch Designer. Whenever you click on something, we have a script that is doing something for us, that is setting, setting stuff up for you behind the scenes. So we'll do a real easy one, which is just the off to on. When we click on it, we're going to change the file name over here, and we're going to queue it so it starts, starts at the beginning of the movie. OK? So um, we can uh, zoom in a little bit so you can see this better, hopefully, and open your open your viewer. Now I want to go in the the the, uh, the method called off to on and press enter, and then and make sure you're tabbed in. Uh, you have to press tab. You can't press spacebar four times. You need to press tab because this is uh, Python is very indent sensitive. Tab. So I'm going to open this. Uh, this is this this parameter is called file. So I know how I can access that. I can go op, open, open parentheses and double quote. I want I need to go up a level because movie selected is not living inside here with a thumbnail. It's up a level. So you need to go up to dot, dot slash to go up a level, and then you'll find movie selected.
I'm going to make this a little bigger so it's easier for you to see. There we go. Okay. And another quote and, and close those uh, parentheses. Dot par, because I want to find the parameter called file equals. And we know what we want here. We want the same script we used in this, this movie file in. Is space equals or equal? Equal. Uh, I, I like the space. Okay. Yeah. So I can just, instead of typing it in again, I can go up to my movie file in and grab this expression we used earlier to get the, the file path. I'm just going to copy this, control C for copy, and put it down here, and paste. Now the last, the last one is I just want to click that pulse button. So, you know what, I'm going to be lazy and copy this part here. Right up to the par and put it in the next line. So it's right. op movie selected dot par. Yeah, you can just you can select this, copy and paste it. <clears throat> and then uh, Q pulse is the name of the parameter. We tried this before and it'll work better this time. And pulse to actually push the pulse button. Well, if I open up my thumbnail here and click on it, there we go. I can see it over here, and Movie Selected is already playing. And every time I click it, it starts the movie over. So that's that's working. So if you don't, if you only get the banana, the the line that is uh, setting the file path is has an error. Did you did you name it Movie Selected, and the spelling is right? That's one thing to check because we're going to Movie Selected. Oh. And you need to make sure that it's actually firing the script. So make sure that the panel execute that oh, okay. has this set to thumbnail and this set to select. Because we want it to fire whenever you click on that thumbnail. OK, uh, make the thumbnail active and click on it. If you don't mind, since we're over a little time, I'll just go ahead and make the viewer quickly. And um, it won't take too long. So there's a few ways of doing this, but I want to send the movie selected out. I want to send it out of the movie library because I've selected the movie. Now I want to get it out of the library and send it to a viewer that I've made somewhere else. It could be a full screen projector. It could be just a little window. But I want to uh, send it out. So I'm going to add an out top. I'm going to add an out top. And that'll let me go up a level, and I will now have a nice little output on my component. So I want to create a new viewer here. So let's right-click on the output of movie that movie library right here. This is an important part. Right-click on the output and go to Component and select a new container. We're going to make a viewer container here. And I'm going to rename this to viewer. So I'll open the parameters for the viewer. And let's make this 1280 by 720 as well. Yeah, we can actually to the on the right hand side. Let's uh, let's close this. It make more space for yourself. I uh, earlier when we were putting the stuff inside there, it was nice to see it update on the other side. But we're done with that, so forget it. And just like in the thumbnail, when we created this component, we need to set what we want in the background. So we'll go to the panel page and uh, do the dot slash out one again. All right. So this is pretty much completed application. If, if you wanted to now have this on one of your monitors, say my left monitor here, I could have a movie selector browser. And on my right monitor, I could send this container out to the projector, which is how I, show, I showed you how to do that uh, yesterday. 
So um, that's one way of doing it. Yeah, so let's, uh, I'll open the viewer here, and if I click on this, all right, it's working. So if I look at the way I made it here, I put the viewer on top of the control panel so you can see it all in one window. And that's really easy to do now because we have, we have two of these. Let's go up one more level. And you see that we have, we have a project. Project 1 is a container already, and it's playing forward. We can't see both of the control panel and the viewer because it's the wrong size. So let's go to the width and height. And remember, the width we made was uh, 960 wide. And it was 540 high, but now we have two of them. So 540 times 2 is 1080. So this doesn't look quite right. So I have to now align them using the align parameter. And there we go. Uh, so now, this is just how I started, so I wanted to show you how to finish it. That's a good question. So I'm going to I'm going to turn off the parameters here, and I'm going to split my pane so I can see inside it while you can see it on the left So it'll, when it updates. So on the right, I'm going to go inside. These have what's called an align order. See the align order parameter? Max, right here? Yeah. This here, so it, it basically determines what's 0, what's 1, what's 2. So if I if I move the uh, this movie lib up to 1, it will be on the bottom. It's 0, 1. Okay. So if you were stacking a whole bunch of things, you could use that align order for each one. And I'm going to save my work. Now, I could have made this by copying and pasting a lot of nodes and doing no Python and uh, not making it dynamically allocating. But the point was to make something that you can keep using for different folders and drop new movies in. So let's go test that and see if it actually works. If I go into the movie library and find that folder dat that we had to actually say what we're, like what movies we're loading, we select it, and uh, I'm going to select a new folder of movies. So uh, under root folder, I'll open the file browser and select the Beeple folder. Say select folder. There we go. Now, it, I haven't clicked on one, so my movie hasn't changed yet. So we have to click on one for that to happen. But... It definitely loaded everything in. I didn't have to do any work. You can take this and point it to your external drive with 200 movies and see what happens. They might be very small, but you're going to get them all in there. If What you could do is whenever this list changes, you could stop playing the movie. I could add more Python script in and say, clear it out. Check it out. Uh, if I go up here and I make, I just copy and paste this, Done. Okay, now I have two libraries, right? I'm going to go into the second one, and I'm going to get that other folder I had. Okay. So now i got two folders, right? So how about this? How about uh, I just control the display of them? So I would, like this. So watch this. Uh, if I if I go to the display of this one and say I'm going to copy the parameter, I'm going to go to this one and paste the reference. Now it's the same, but I'll go I'll I'll do a little cheat. I'll go one minus. So now I just have to control one, right? And you could put that on a button, or you could put anything. That we've showed you how to make chops do that for you. So. There's a number of ways, like um, in the palette, there's a couple examples where you, you specify a path, and you could look in there and copy and paste it out into your own project. Could you do over animations or something? Yes, you could. Uh, so what I could, what I could have done here is, um, let's go up a level. I could just go insert a top operator here, <coughs> throw it on a cross. In the, in the container. Throw it on a cross. 
and make sure a movie is selected. And now I'm crossfading between my two movie bins. In an hour, we made a crossfading DJ app. So, <laughs> so I could uh, I could just put in a text to top. There you go. There's a title. So what I what what you could do is go into the movie library, and you could go in here and add it right in here. Okay. Instead. So, so manually. Yeah. 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 So I mean, watch. I'll I'll do it like this. I'll Since go. Since you were like optimizing on it, you know, yeah. You no, it, it's pretty. It's pretty quick. <laughs> All I would need to do is is go like this. I will go. It's very quick, actually. I go up. Movie. Oops, I need to spell it right. Dot. And I just want to go one comma name. So now I'm getting the uh, the actual movie of of it on the movie, right? So I'm just overlaying the the title of the movie on the movie. And now if I open this one, oh, okay, I, I I I did a bad. I should. I need to put that in the master, not in the clone. So yes, getting ahead of myself there. So now. All they have their names on them. So, can I copy that? Sure. Go inside here, and there's a text. And notice it, it, it's the exact same trick we did for the file parameter here. In the file parameter, I used one dot path. So in here in the text, I used I used this name column and just did one dot name. So in the in the text parameter. Both of these here have uh, an align order parameter on the layout page, and since we're using the align, the align, uh, the align feature to align these automatically, that align order will say uh, it's kind of like layers, like zero, one, two. It just counts up. So, and if you have made something at a zero, one, two, and then you want to fit something in between, you can still use point numbers. So you could go one point five and get another one in between there. So you're, you're not stuck. So that's like first sort of panel building UI building but that's how we build applications out and uh, mm -hmm. the more time you spend the, the better you can make your UI and your interface um, this is real basic but I thought it would be a, a fun example to squeeze in so we're kind of at the end we went a little over sorry about that but I do want to remind you of how you can contact us for help because um, we're readily available and you guys have this all fresh in your mind. So the forum is where we want to hear from you uh, if you have any problems and that's where support uh, questions can go. And the forum's really active. Um, so I'd, I'd recommend uh, checking it out. There's also a Facebook help page or help group, I should say. Uh, we don't run it. Um, uh, a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of our users actually in Europe started it because they found that our forum was you know, a few hours behind and and they wanted something a little more uh, in their time zone. So the, the Facebook help group would um, be perfect for you guys. He, I just think you search Touch Designer help group and you'll find it. Um, or you can ask for it on the forum. We also have our own Facebook page, which we'll, we always update with our events, our upcoming workshops, uh, and new projects that people are working on. So if you want inspiration or just to see what people are doing with uh, Touch Designer, it's, uh, it's nice. Um, and also, uh, we have uh, a, a Twitter page, which is the same. We post uh, the same sort of information, upcoming workshops, important dates, and, and stuff like that. And thank you for coming. So. But anyway, yeah, thanks, uh, thanks for coming.